Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV for some more Total War Three Kingdoms. The Furious Wild DLC with our faction preview series, this time looking at the final one of the Three Kingdoms characters, as it were, in the recommended section, and that is Sun Jian, the Tiger of Jian Dong. So, of course, he hasn't changed that much. He has his noteworthy characters. He has Huang Gai, he has Chong Pu as well, who's not shown here. There's Han Dang as well. And of course, with A World Betrayed and Man of Heaven and all the other DLCs that have come out since the vanilla game, they have had a lot of unique characters added to the Wu faction, which is great to see. But of course, Sun Jian always, some of his strongest noteworthy characters have been his children, Sun Tzu, Sun Chuan, and Sun Ren. Now, Sun Tzu, of course, the vanguard, he is like a Lubu light. He's incredibly powerful in the game. Very, very good. Morale's a little bit wobbly and he occasionally loses control, which is his downside. Sun Chuan is a very solid commander, though uninspiring in attack. And then of course Sun Ren as a vanguard is very talented as well. He has Huang Gai as well as a vanguard. Now Huang Gai is one of Sun Jian's earliest followers. Um, Huang Gai, uh, Chong Pu and Han Dang are some of uh, Sun, Chen, uh, Sun Jian's earliest, earliest officers. Huang Gai has a very long history with Sun Jian. By this stage, they've been fighting together for many, many years. Uh, same as Han Dang, same as Chong Pu. And uh, he remains after Sun Jian's death, because of course he does die very, very shortly if you follow the story, though you can choose not to. He stays loyal to the Sun family and would help Sun Tzu uh, claim a huge chunk of territory south of the Yangtze River. Um, and then will be loyal to Sun Chuan as well and played a major, major role in the defeat of Cao Cao at Chu B. Sun Jian's faction mechanics have not changed. It's still heroism, which decreases his recruitment and upkeep costs of units, increases the satisfaction. But you have to do this by fighting and inflicting casualties, which he is very good at. He has mercenary captain retinues, mercenary archers, mercenary infantry and mercenary cavalry, as well as a mercenary outpost. Now, the Nanman can also recruit mercenaries if they choose the right reform, so you may be seeing those in Nanman armies too, rather than it solely being really mainly used by Wu. As far as character goes, he is loyal, fiery, brave. He is in fact one of the finest fighting sentinel examples you will ever see. Um, he, he is a top tier duelist and will take down almost anyone. Um, he gets a plus 15% 15 campaign movement range. Uh, his cost to establish order in desertive settlements is halved, which means he can expand super quickly in certain areas of the map. His uh, recruitment and upkeep cost for mercenary units is reduced too. Sun Jian has never shied away from opportunity. Despite his loyalties, the fall of the Imperial Court presents great opportunities. As a young man, Sun Jian rose from obscurity of his mercantile upbringing, learning from the deeds of his father that fortune must be seized, never expected. Since then, he has always led at the head of the charge, earning the epithet the Vanguard General. It is this determined spirit that drives the Tiger of Jiandong forward. May his roar sweep all obstacles away. So, at the start of this, the coalition has fallen apart. Sun Jian has been the most successful commander in the coalition. He had come from his home base all the way up uh, to join Yuan Shu, swore fealty to Yuan Shu, and Yuan Shu installed him with many, many titles. Though, of course, Sun Jian would never really govern those territories himself. Sun Jian would command an army of about 30,000 soldiers and would avoid many of the passes fighting against Xu Rong and losing, but then fighting against Lu Bu and Hu Jian uh, at Yangren. Then he would fight Dong Zhuo as well, and then he would fight Lu Bu again in the streets of Luoyang to eventually take and hold Luoyang from Dong Zhuo, forcing Dong Zhuo's armies back to the position they're at now. However, the coalition has since collapsed. He has taken by all accounts, the Imperial Seal, which historically he would deliver to Yuan Shu, but uh, according to Romance, he did not. Um, but he would deliver it to Yuan Shu, and then he is starting to return. He is not returning peacefully. It must be understood the coalition has broken up and there is war brewing. There is actual active war happening. Sun Jian's own territories should have historically come under attack by some of Yuan Shao's people. Um, which would lead to a serious fight. Yuan Shu and Yuan Shao have begun to collect allies. Yuan Shao has 
uh, Liu Biao and Cao Cao as part of his faction. Yuan Shu has Gongsun Zan and Tao Qian as part of his faction. And of course, Sun Jian has been sent south to deal with them. However, this leads to a fight with Huang Zhu that would eventually be Sun Jian's death. Enough of the history. Let's go and have a look at him. Luoyang 贼臣定将在猛虎面前就放马过来孙子曰：“故善战者，能为不可胜。我可不能错失良机。”主公，江东之虎必将在啸山林，天下风云必将为之变色。Okay, here we are. Thank you, advisor. So establish your power, Lord Sun Jian. You are far from home. It is time you return south. Coalition is finished and the tyrant's wrath will soon be felt. So only from a strong position in the Southlands can you hope to weather the coming storm, then expand your influence. You must be wary, Liu Biao is aging but crafty, untrustworthy and all too close. While Yuan Shu is ambitious but potentially useful, let none stand in the way of your ambition. So um, this doesn't really play up the fact that there is a major war going on here between the Coalition members, with Yuan Shu uh, leading one side and Yuan Shao leading another. Um, Sun. Jen is still under orders and is a vassal of Yuan Shu, um, which is why he is coming down here to fight. Yes, he is going to establish the Southlands, but he is loyal to Yuan Shu. And the Yuan family and the Sun family would have a quite a history of loyalty to each other, because even though Sun Tzu refused to back Yuan Shu's ploy at becoming an emperor, they still remain friends, friendly to the extent that Yuan Shu's family went under the protection of Sun Tzu and became members of Sun Quan later when Sun Tzu had died, caught quite some se senior members as well, and were trusted with significant amounts of power. The Yuan family and the Sun family, Yuan Shu was part of the Yuan family and uh, the Sun family were close and would remain close despite the potential betrayals that there could have been and misunderstandings that there certainly was. So. With enemies encroaching, Sun Jian draws his blade. You've scored a great victory against the tyrant, while the rest of the coalition has languished. Yes, he was in fact the only person to score a victory against the tyrant. All of the shit that Liu Bei and Guan Yu and Zhang Fei are supposed to have done in the coalition actually was done and achieved by Sun Jian, okay? Um, is part of the thing about Romance of the Three Kingdoms, the, the book itself. It takes achievements uh, by members of Sun Jian's family and Wu as it later uh, as, as their territory later became um, and it gives them to Liu Bei lots of times it's not just once it happens a lot um, but we need to defeat Chuan Rol, uh, baby's first battle and we have the Jade Seal because we found it in the ruins now historically uh, Sun Jian is, is suggested to have found the seal, but he gave it to Yuan Shu pretty much straight away because Yuan Shu had Sun Jian's family. Um, and so Sun Jian didn't really have a choice. Um, right. 
we have some quite cool stuff here that we'll look at right at this moment in time. So here we have Sun Jian himself, the mad, bad, awesome commander. Like he, he really was good. We'll, we'll give you this. Um, and you know what? We're going to give you this as well. So Sun Jian is brave, fiery law. He leads from the front. He has a history with Dong Zhuo. They have known each other for many years. They fought alongside each other in the Liang Rebellion. And apparently, though this is debated on its historical veracity, Sun Jian and Dong Zhuo first fell out then because he requested that Dong Zhuo, who was acting insubordinately, to be disciplined. That, however, is something that comes from a source that is not wholly trusted. It could be that, in fact, they were very much in favour of each other and against the commanding officer because some of the other stuff that is mentioned by sources that are slightly more reliable and the unreliable sources is that Sun Jian and Dong Zhuo both respect each other's military ability and said they're the only two who came up with plans that would actually be effective in that rebellion because that rebellion, of course, was failed to be put down. So um, he's around. He is. He's really good. He has Flames of the Phoenix, but if you can get Tenacity of Steel in him, he will just kill everything and everyone in his way and Impetuous Charge as well. He is awesome. He's like a vanguard and a sentinel crossed. Unkillable unit killer. He's awesome. Next we have Huang Gai, the unreadable warrior. The man who is credited with the fire ship betrayal, like feigned betrayal that led to the downfall of Cao Cao at Chu Bi. He, uh, I believe he was an orphan. Orphan at a young age, lived in poverty, self-taught military uh he, he taught himself with all these military books and everything else, a self-taught military scholar. And when the opportunity arose to join Sun Jian, he joined him and became one of his key officers. Next, we have Chung Pu. Now, Chung Pu is an extraordinarily important chap for... Yeah, you know, we'll give this to you for satisfaction. Uh, it's an extraordinarily important chap for the Sun family in general. He became... Uh, equal to Zhou Yu in command of the army by the time of Tribi. Um, but Sun Jian used Chong Pu as his vanguard commander and a major of separate command. He led a separate force of Sun Jian's army with the rank and right to operate separate from the main force. This shows a great level of trust in him. He was one of the greats of the southern generals. Now, who is not shown here is a chap called Han Dang, who was a mercenary. Um who had fought for Sun Jian for a long, long time and will become one of the loyal officers under the Sun family as time went on as well. He really should be here, as should a guy called Zhu Mao, who was Sun Jian's one, he was another officer and one of Sun Jian's longest serving officers, but he's not there. But we do have his Lady Wu, and I wish she would get some unique uh, portraits or something because she really deserves it. She is a serious player as well. Um, really, really important. Uh, she sees the death of her eldest son, she sees the death of her husband, but she holds the family together and advises, acts as a diplomat, and keeps Sun Chuan in line, because Sun Chuan's a little bit fiery, and doesn't always make a great decision. Then, of course, we have Lu Su. Lu Su becomes a very, very important envoy and diplomat, before eventually becoming a serious military commander, replacing Zhou Yu. Um after his death. Uh, he is responsible for uh, the alliance between Liu Bei, Lu Qi and Sun Quan before Chu Bi. He is responsible for the deal that leads to the splitting of Jing province between the Sun clan and the Liu clan. Um, he is responsible for a huge amount of peaceful diplomacy and alliance building between Wu and Shu. Um, he was also a very talented commander, strategist, uh, who had a lot of respect from his troops and his peers, though he was not a Zhou Yu. We should say that. Now, as with everything, you have the opportunity to uh, appoint a chancellor if you so wish. Chong Pu is not very happy with us, but that's made him a little bit happier. We could potentially give it to him if we wanted to, but we don't need to. We also have some territory, though we are miles away from it. You can see we're, we're best buddies with Yuan Shu. We should actually be at war with Liu Biao. We should be at war with uh, Tsai Mao. We should be at war with... Um, we have no one we can trade with, unfortunately, which is a little bit of a shame because we're surrounded by the Han Empire, so we need to fight our way through this. Um, 
for whatever reason, we can't do this, which does disappoint me somewhat because we should actually be able to have that. When well, we should have that automatically. We are sure. We really should. Our army it has some mercenary actors who are brilliant, some axe band who are useful, and some arch militias who are arch militia, and some mounted lancer militia. Um, and we have to beat Tran Ro, who is a dribbler. So uh, let's jump in here and smash his face off. Um, we'll jump in, we'll fight it just so we can see everything off, and then uh, I'll see you in it. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got a pretty good force here. He has a relatively pathetic force. We're going to shift our boys up front first. He has final rush, which is bloody useless. You go up there. You can bugger off over this side. All of you boys are just going to advance straight up. And we'll turn that off. Do you know what? You, you, and you and you can also have guard removed. We don't want guard happening. Now, this guy's a champion, so technically he should be able to fight. Uh, no. No, 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 no. I want to beat your skull in with Sun Jian. Oh, he doesn't want to duel me. <sighs> That's a shame. <clears throat> Sun Jian, beat his face in anyway. You're going to shift over here, Huang Gai. The only reason why I don't want Huang Gai to duel is because Huang Gai doesn't have a weapon. Uh, nor does he, to be fair. But uh, Huang Gai does hit harder. But Sun Jian is just... Sun Jian is our boy for this. There isn't anyone else. There are very few people in this game who... No. Who uh, can match Sun Jian in a fight, frankly. Very, very few. Go on. Flames of phoenixes. Oh, uh, your horse has been killed. That's no problem. Fight here. That's fine. Now you can rush in here. You. Charge. You and you. Straight up. You and you. Also, straight up. Where's this cavalry? This cavalry can come over here. Because we've got their infantry pinned. Charge. Charge, charge, charge. Axe number one. Axe number two. They're already running. It's going to be a slaughter. One guy is going to have some fun killing. I want you to hit him. I want you to hit him. Everyone else. Just go in there and butcher. Just kill everything under the sun. Please, if you don't mind. Go, 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 go. You boys, chase. You boys are chasing them. It's a shame about your horse, but we were charging G Militia, so it's sort of understandable. We'll mess him up here. I think we've lost one man so far. Oh, what? Hong Guy's lost his horse as well? That's just disappointing. All right, we are actually going to have to lose some troops here, because otherwise we don't stand a chance. Unless we can duel him. We're going to duel him, which is not something that I really am keen on doing with Hong Guy, because he's going to lose some health. Uh, he's a vanguard. He's not really meant for this. But we'll stand here because we can always interrupt it if we need to. If it starts to look a little bit wobbly. One guy does look rather cool. Um, it's a little bit closer than we'd like. But that's only because one guy doesn't really have any weapons. We can't do anything to help this at all. Um, and this isn't going to help in a duel. Yeah, he's not really a duelist. Is it just me, or is one guy missing his spear? It sort of a appears every now and again, but isn't there most of the time. Is that just because I've got it on? No, that's a bug. Ooh, interesting. Or does he just... No, that's, that's a bug. Wow, that's quite... I've never seen that before. That's new to this patch. I will inform CA. Um, uh, yeah, quite cool. Everyone else has their weapons, and in every other preview I've done, and in my own private campaign, um, uh, everybody's had their own weapons. One guy, for whatever reason, does not have his own weapon. Come on. Now, Tranro, he fortunately doesn't have anything, uh, that he can do too. Uh, come on, finish him off. This is getting tiresome. Beat him to death. Beat him to death. Oh, we could interrupt. We could interrupt. It's getting tight. Come on. Come on. It's just... We have... 
slightly better damage. Ever so slightly. Oh shit, he won. Mess his face up. That's a disappointment. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Honga will be fine. Honga will be fine. He's legendary. He might have an injury. Uh, but yeah, that's why I didn't want to duel with him. He's a vanguard against a champion. Frankly, with the extra damage, I'm slightly disappointed. Um, and I should have run away, but I thought he'd be able to do it. But for whatever reason, he didn't. No problem. Not a big deal. Yeah, he's fine. Well, he's not fine. He's definitely injured. We've got heroism, though, because we slaughtered so many people. We're going to take the income. Uh, excellent. Glorious victory. To General rides home, but threat persists. We have to capture Nan, which is uh, here in Jungling. Um, oh, man, here. What? Anything particularly wrong with you? No, nothing wrong. Fantastic. You're just uh, going to take a turn to come back. No extra traits. So, about these settlements, you can see they've changed here. So one, the names have changed. Before, this was all Jiangling, which is the name of the city, and you can see the city name here. The actual commandery name was Nan. Um, and then now you don't have like large town, small town, livestock farm, whatever. You have the name of the settlement in that area, which makes it a lot more historically accurate, and I love it. Love it so much. We're just gonna jump in here. Pyrrhic victory, yeah, ourselves will take it. I don't mind. It can be a Pyrrhic victory. This is a preview. 12 heroism because we killed more press persist establishing order brilliant uh build a future in the south so we need to construct or upgrade a building in changsha which is our home territory uh we've got a brown thoroughbred eh well guess who's one oh no you 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 are we don't have anyone who really needs a brown thoroughbred hmm okay we can hang on to that Changsha Linxiang, we need to construct or upgrade a building. Now, all of this stuff, we have trade, we have armor craftsmen, and we have a tea house. So, with that in mind, mercenary outpost would be uh, probably a good one because we get the increase from that. Uh, Lu Su, you can jump in here and do commerce. That's going to help us there. Um, Sun Jian. Uh, is almost at Marcus as well, which will be really, really nice. And notice as well, I just want to show this off. Sure be. This is the battle in inverted comp. Like, this is um, supposedly the battle site of the famous Red Cliffs battle um, here, which is really quite nice. There's Hefei as well, another famous site for great battles. I mean, several battles. They're all around, which is just fantastic. Now, as far as trade goes, we still can't trade with anyone, which is a little bit of a shame, but it uh, doesn't matter. Next turn next turn so what we want to do now is head back and control the entire commandery of Changsha um, which will take a little bit of doing uh, we've got Ba Dong Lin Yuan there which we could probably steal on the way back uh, Cha Ling that's uh, the tea house Cha the tea uh, Ling I believe is valley so tea valley um, we've completed that Fools, warriors, we need to recruit soldiers. That's not going to be a problem. Character developments, the standard three um, are there. Uh, Jiang Ling. If shit kicks off, we're not really going to be able to hold that. So I'm not overly worried about it. Um, what we probably want to do, though, is upgrade that. Um, we definitely, definitely want to recruit some more soldiers. Um, and we want to recruit before we jump across. I think a couple of these boys. And I would probably go for one of those as well. <clears throat> That'll do quite nicely. We'll stay there for a turn just to sort our lives out before we start to attack. These guys are all still pleased as punch. Well, not quite, but they're trying hard to remain happy. And we'll move on for another turn. Um, just very, very quickly recruit the troops because then we're going to hit Badong and then we're going to have a period of uh, lacking replenishment. And because I, this is a preview and I didn't fight it, we are going to get hit here. I'm going to show you this in a second. Um, so this is not somewhere we're actually going to be able to fight today, but this is one of the passes. And there are passes all over the strategic locations, historic strategic locations of China. Yes, we've completed that. 
And now we need to hold three settlements, which we're going to do by crossing here. But here is Quay Pass. So the passes are brilliant new battles. And this one holds access. There's Quay Pass, and then there's another pass uh, around Hanjong here, um, which protect uh, Shu. Basically, it protects the entrance to Shu. So you have to come around the outside here or travel down the river to get into Shu. Make Shu very, very defensible, which of course it was. It was the launching point for Liu Bang when he was taking over. It was the launching point from Hanjong as well for uh, the Qin came from Hanjong and built up over here as well. A very, very strategically defensive position. Now, our army here is looking shiny and pretty. Let's move across and we're gonna head down towards Dong. We're almost there. Jiang Ling, you know what? We've got the money. We may as well spend it on that for now. Nothing else doing next turn. <clears throat> and so the game itself, because it has this historical map, because it has the passes, you'll find I absolutely love invading Shu because you're moving through Hanjong. It's so easy for them to set up lines and lines of defense. No. Um... Yeah, sod off. Um, <clears throat> and now they've added the passes, it just makes it so much better. It's so much harder to take this territory. Mao Jie and Guo Jia. Now these two are two of Cao Cao's, I mean Guo Jia you should know about, but Mao Jie as well, two of Cao Cao's key individuals. Now we don't necessarily need a strategist, um, and if we have the choice of one, we should go from uh, Guo Jia. But Mao Jie is an underrated strategist early game he has fire arrows he has night battles he was historically uh, in charge of recruitment oversaw recruitment for south uh, uh armies and for his court very important chap Gorja, of course is the famous strategist for south battlefield commander for south we have a war blade we have a war blade chong pu chong pu had a spear by the way uh but uh, this game doesn't like them to have spears when they originally had spears we're gonna get this because we will be able to trade eventually uh you are Wei Jie. you're not gonna make it here in time we're gonna take bad dong bad dong decisive victory taken that should give us the three province uh three settlements that they need 14 heroism as well which is just magnificent because we're getting casualties heroism increases you do with sun Jian, you want to kill as many people as possible uh, send a character on assignment. We've already done. Uh, prove our worth. We need to reach the second market. Marcus. And here is Sha Mo Ke. So with Sun Jian, you're one of the few main factions that border a Nan Man. Sha Mo Ke is a genuine, genuine Nan Man figure. A genuine tribal leader, I should say. Uh, actually, if we're going to be accurate, a genuine tribal leader. So he was basically he, he controlled the Wuling, the five valleys he was chief of the five valleys um, but he first really appears in history much later on when Liu Bei is preparing to attack Sun Quan uh, in revenge for the death of Guan Yu and he bribes Shamoka to fight on his side uh, but Shamoka in the ensuing battles is eventually killed by Liu Shun's forces working for Sun Quan um, but he's the only uh, one of the Nanman playable factions that we know genuinely existed, which makes him very, very interesting. He's also a very different type of uh, Nanman character to the others as well. We've taken Badong. Um, we could probably do with another horse in here just to make that better. I'm not going to get Gorja or Mao Jie uh, simply because it's a preview. If this was not, I would not have spent the money on the horses and I would do it. Liu Bei will cooperate with uh, Liu Biao. Sorry, will cooperate with us because he wants our money. He can go sort of die. Um, we don't need that. War benefits us. We need to smash the shit out of the hand in this area, which we will do. Um, but first and foremost, what I need to do actually is bring more people into my forces. Eventually, Sun Jian plots a dynasty. So we need to destroy Huangzhou and time out, um, and that will put us on the path to glory, which is important. The Imperial Seal. So, Liu Biao wants the Imperial Seal. This is from Romance, okay? This isn't actually uh, historically true because historical truth is that Yuan Shao wanted him dead. Liu Biao was allied with Yuan Shao. Um, so that's why the attack happened. But in this, it is... If we give the seal to uh, Yuan Shu, um, we declare war with Liu Biao. And this could potentially lead to an event which ends up with Sun Jian dying. If we give the seal, 
then we uh, get good relationship with Liu Biao. We are going to keep the seal, um, and it's going to declare war with Liu Biao, which means we may lose this territory here, but yeah, don't care. <coughs> don't care. What we can do uh, whilst we are waiting, wait, yeah, you have some G infantry, you have some archers, that's quite a force, my man, that's quite a force. Shame, it needs to die. And because we are Sun Jian, we need to kill these guys. So let's go in there and kill them. Because heroism is everything. The more casualties we inflict, the greater our heroism. The more heroism we have, the cheaper everything becomes. Now he's in his own fort, which of course means we need to attack his fort. But fortunately, we have someone who can give us shield wall and our axes can use shield wall, which will give us a good place to advance behind. He has a lot of archers. His archers are better than mine. I have a lot of cavalry. He has none. Um, we should be able to stretch him. So what I want is one set of horses there, one set of horses there, one set of horses there, one set of horses, I don't know, over here as well. Hong guy can be over here. Sun Jian in the front. You boys, shield wall, advance. You and you, we don't want that on. You can be over here. Start battle. There. We have spread him out. Go, 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 go. <clears throat> um, out of curiosity, would he wish to duel us? Doesn't want to duel. Uh, we might be able to duel, but we 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 learned our lesson last time. So you are not dueling, my man. You are not dueling. But we spread them out. So you and you advance. They're in a shield wall, so they should be relatively fine. And this guy here has no spears in this area, which is magnificent for us. Absolutely magnificent. That's what we want. We want to punch straight through here. Sun Jian is going to ride up. He's going to get shot a little bit, but we don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, I remember him having someone there. Maybe, maybe, maybe he doesn't. Maybe I got that wrong, but I thought he had someone there. Oh no, Sun Jian is fine. Sun Jian is nearly always fine. You have to work really hard to get Sun Jian killed. Smash straight in here. Flames of the Phoenix. Do some damage. Look at the damage he's got there. Our cavalry is coming in behind, which is going to really upset them. These boys here can now start to ride. Um, these axes. Break the shield wall. Go. All the rest of you guys. Go, 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 go. Advance, advance, advance. Speed, speed, speed. We're in here. These guys are wavering when this hits. Hopefully they will route. They have routed. Go, 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 go. Go. Go, go, go. Charge. Don't wait. You boys are coming in. Charge, charge, charge. This is what we want. This is why we spread them out. Get in here. Do you know what? You guys can chase them. You, none of this. You, none of this. You, none of this. Absolutely going to break through them. You, charge. Which isn't going to be ideal. I know he's charging a formation that's going to hurt him really, really badly. Get in here. Quickly. You two as well. Charge. Axe and axe. Charge. So we have a fight on our hands here. These boys, are they going to turn and face? They look like they have turned and faced. Brilliant. Come on. I'm just going to wait here. We're going to see where you go. Go, 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 go. They're not in formation. Charge them, charge them, charge them, charge them, charge them. Brilliant. Okay, it wasn't the world's greatest charge, but... It might be enough just to keep them wobbling a little bit. We're fighting there. We're fighting here. We're fighting here. It's going very well. You need to come over here and deal with them. These axes, you can swing off here. You two. Uh, you come over here and you come over here. Axe and axe are in here. You cavalry reform out here. We don't need you in that fight. You boys back here. Just in case. Charge over here. They have broken. One guy in you calm you can deal with him too you pin excellent job more flames of more phoenixes please they have unfortunately routed my cavalry there these boys are gonna get shot to shit my axes are gonna rip into them my g militia are doing their job here sun jian has that we're charging in here you're getting in here fix him absolutely fix him we don't want him alive you, axe and axe, if you don't mind, shift over in this direction. Uh, no, we don't need you in that direction anymore because these guys have come back to life, which is magnificent. Good. Chase. You boys. 
think you've done enough. Back you come. Back you come. One of you on them. Um, we do need the casualties, actually. Yeah, but they have come back. That is why we don't want that. He's running. He's running. You chase him. One guy, if you don't mind, come over here. Uh, you and you over here, please. One guy, they're yours. <clears throat> uh, Sun Jian, you lost your bloody horse again, haven't you? How disappointing. Well, come over here. We're killing all of them. They're running away now. All right. If it was a regular thing, I'd just chase them down. It's not as preview. But yes, you do want to chase them down, get as many casualties as you possibly can. We smashed this army. Hopefully that should be it. If we have to finish it off, we have to finish it off. It's not a big deal. Uh, but we do have an opportunity to cross the river and take the fight to Huang Zhu and Tai Mao and see if we can knock them out of the game very quickly too. 13 heroism. Yeah, could have done better. We'll employ Wei Jie. Definitely. Solitary, beautiful, brave. He was quite impressive. I'm going to take the replenishment. Um, this territory is now ours. If we advance to Huarong, we could finish him off. We can't, unfortunately, I believe... Uh, no, we can. We can raise an army. Spectacular. So, right... You come over here, get in here, right? That's your job. Down here, we are going to raise an army and we're going to raise Chong Pu. Um, we don't have any spare money. Chong Pu, oh no, in you go. Chong Pu is going to be raised here so we can start to go up and claim Chang Sha here because, uh, you know. We uh, we need that territory. We need that territory. I think Sun Jian should be able to hold against these useless turds. Uh, Lu Biao doesn't exactly have the world's greatest set of uh, vassals. He does, however, have some pretty talented commanders in his own right. Yeah, we needed to head back to Jiangling. We should be able to beat him at Jiangling with our forces together. Um, shouldn't be too hard. I wish we had Han Dang. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a shame we don't have Han Dang. Uh, character elements, Wei Jie is now available. Magnificent. Drop in here if you don't mind. Um, we could, if we wanted to, recruit uh, Lu Su into this force. I mean, we can't actually recruit Lu Su into this force. Lu Su is doing something, um, which is a bit of a shame. But we can sit here and we can defend. Jiangling has its own garrison. It's not the world's best garrison, but it has one. We have to deal with Huang Zhong here, which is a bit of a shame. And Liu Qi, his eldest son. But we should be able to manage. Despite all of that, we should be able to manage. Liu Su has leveled up. Now, Liu Su with some precision will be very, very handy. Um, right. Ling Xian. We don't know how big their garrisons are. So we're just going to hold here, I think, for... Uh, yeah, we'll get another one of those. We'll get another one of those. And then we'll hold here for a second just to build up our forces up here. We're fine to hold for a little bit, but we could, if we saved up some money, bring this force out because that's a serious force. Unbalanced army, but it doesn't matter. The point is, <clears throat> we're just holding Nan against Liu Biao. Here he comes. Acknowledge legitimacy. Yes, I'll acknowledge anything for that amount of money. No problem at all. No problem whatsoever. So we've crossed over here anyway. We're going to defend Nan because I think where there's an opportunity to defeat Liu Biao um, over this territory. Give the seal. Yeah, go on, have the seal. I don't give a toss. You can have the seal. Um, we've got nothing else to add to him now, but it doesn't matter too much. Development's Chen Gong is available. He's another serious strategist. If you wanted to recruit a strategist, actually, Gorgia is still knocking about. Fine. You know, if the game is not going to bring out Gorgia, then 
We'll bring Guojai into this army. That makes this army now a real threat to Liu Biao. These boys here still need a turn or two before they can sort their lives out. Um, but I think... Let's go have a little bit of a scout. Got, are we not quite close enough to see... Right, they have an army there, but what's their garrison like? Yeah, their garrisons are shit. Their garrisons are shit. So, Zhu Jun, very, very famous, and friend of Sun Jian. Okay, friend of Sun Jian. We really shouldn't be forced to fight him, but if the game is going to force us to fight him, so be it. Um, we can't be that worried about it. Unfortunately, I don't think I can quite make it back to replenish, but we just know what's there now. Um... That territory as well, we want to check out with him just to see what we can find. I think Tribi will be the uh, best one. I just wanted to see what the armies were down there. We'll move on. Hopefully, Liu Biao will attack us in this turn because that will be a good ending, I think, to this preview. Because once you've beaten Liu Biao's force, there ain't much left for you to do. Close defeat, quick save. Uh, just in case uh, game crashes because this is an early access build and it is buggy. Um, for the early access, we've got this defense to hold here, which works in our favor pretty nicely. He, of course, has Huang Zhong, who is who is good. He really is good. He has Liu Qi, who is less good, and he has himself, who's crap. So, we're, we're in an all right position here. It's, it's actually not all that much in his favor. Yes, thank you. And having Guo Jia. Guo Jia's visibility, they just can't outmaneuver us on the battlefield if we use him properly. Um, as well, you know, just top tier, top, top tier strategist. There are not many strategists in his league. Like he is uh, in this game rather than in real life. In real life, it's a little bit more difficult to say because he wasn't of the same tier as them, but he is up there with Zhou Yu and Zhuge Liang in, in this game. He really is up there. Right. Um, let's just position all of our troops back a touch. Turn that off. Barricades remaining here and here. So we think he's coming in from this side. And we think he's coming from this side. We're going to drop a barricade here. Do you know what? I think we will drop one in... I wish we could just barricade off here. Um, nah. Here. What am I doing? What am I doing? Think about it. Here. Yes, there we go. That is where we will barricade. Now, you boys, you're not exactly in a magnificent position here. So one of you can be here. Form up here. You boys can be behind. That should help you hold. You archery types, unfortunately, the wrong way. That's a useless barricade. No way. What about here? Can you... That's just no use to me whatsoever. No use at all. Right, we'll barricade there then. Right, you guys can come here. Um, you boys can be here. Uh, we got some more archers over here who can position themselves here. And we'll have some more archers here. Um, you can hold. In this position here. G militia behind. You'll be fine-ish. Got some more G over here. Um, gonna have them back because we know that uh, they are susceptible to arch fire. Cavalry on that flank here. Um, we are going to leave Guojia in command over here. We're gonna have Sun Jian and Huang Gai over here. Sun Jian very much frontlining this. Shield wall here. Shield wall here. Axe and axe ready in reserve. Do I have anything else? I don't believe I do. Let's go. Right, you chaps, I need you out. You are my battle winners for this. You are my battle winners. These guys are going to advance. They have one set of archers. I have some anti-cav in this area. They're going to have to fight through a hell of a lot just to get through. Um, I know I am back quite a chunk. And I could be further forward. But there is a reason for this. They have to advance so far. 
before we start shooting, before they can start shooting at us. Then we can advance up here to defend our lines. Over here, looks like they're advancing just straight at us, which perhaps wouldn't be what I would do if I was them, but hey. Uh, Sun Jian is standing there looking awesome. One guy is here too. Hmm. Where the bollocks are you Moppets going? What the hell are you doing? You come back here. I didn't mean to select you. Right. We are going to start to move our cavalry over here. There might be a little bit of a cavalry battle going on. You boys. Yep. See, they've been shot to shit. Now we can advance to defend this territory. You guys can advance up here just to hold there. All my archers are going to start shooting now. He, of course, has the infantry of Jing, who are, you know, really quite solid troops. To be fair, really quite solid troops. Uh, we do need to watch out for that. You can shift here. Uh, yeah, we're going to put you on skittish mode, just in case. You, charge. You, charge. You, charge. You, charge. You, charge. You. Advance here. You can come round here to this flank. You and you, I think, can advance straight up in the line here. Axe, axe. Just get ready. My archers are shooting. We are prepared to kill them. Cav, cav, cav. Uh, no guard mode. You, no guard mode. They want to shoot at you. They want to shoot at you. That's their own prerogative. And it's going to end up with them dead. One guy. In you come. Uh, no, not on them, on him. Sun Jian, you are doing a magnificent job, my boy. In you come. Uh, right. Unlatch yourself and come around this way. You as well. Get in there. Axe and axe, we want you around here, please. Boys, thank you very much. This fight over here has become quite dangerous, but we are beating their cavalry, which is the important thing. My archers are shooting the crap out of them too, and the G infantry should hold a good number. We have killed them off. We're chasing them. We need to chase them now. Um, that should deal with them. You come in here. Uh, you come in here, actually. Sun Jian really needs the help. I uh, wasn't expecting him to need the help that greatly this quickly. Our axes are doing a magnificent job. Uh, we need more axes over there, actually, boys. This axe unit... I think can make its way over here. You guys can come into this flank here. We have run out of arrows. So you are now light infantry. Welcome. Welcome to the fight. You go kill. You come over here. Right. That's that dealt with. These guys are here. One guy is chasing him. Sun Jian, you're still on your horse. That's a magnificent bonus. In you come. You are unfortunately not doing all that well. And Huang Zhong is no slouch. But he doesn't hit as hard as you. Let's see if we can deal with him. You boys, if you don't mind, if you can shoot them, that would be just brilliant. That would be just brilliant. You guys need to come in down here. We're keeping Lu Biao at bay. Come on, shoot. Shoot this G militia. Shoot this G militia. You guys come in to rear charge. Uh, right, they are running. Good. You're going to form up over here. You archers, I want you to form up on this flank. We are holding and we will continue to hold for as long as we need to. The axes, I need you over here as well. Please. Have we... Yeah, we've got them in the rear. We've got them in the rear. Right. Chase him. You, you and you. Dig in. You and you as well. Dig in. Ah, shit. You've lost your bloody horse again. Your bell end. Why have you lost your horse? Come on, hit him. Hit him. Hit him some more. Look at how hard he's hitting. Bang, he's gone. Right, Lu Biao does actually hit relatively hard. He's gone nuts. So we're just going to hang back a tiny bit for now. They've been broken. One of you on them, one of you on the others. Uh, cavalry. In you go. Archers. Ready? Nothing else left, actually. It's just this formation here. 
This formation here is in a touch of trouble, because even though these boys are winded, they've still got a very clear rear charge. Bash! Infantry of Jing are good, but they can't handle that. Look at that. Hopefully... Yes, we've got some route. That three of them are broken. Axes come in. That should see them off. This is game over. It's just him left. You don't want to be part of this, Mr. Lubiao. You don't want to be part of this at all. Speed it up. Hopefully, I mean, we're not going to catch him, to be honest, because he's off his horse. Uh, but you want to chase all these guys down and kill them. Heroic victory. It was never going to be anything but. He was a dead man. You know, when you're garrisoning, garrisoning one of those uh, like coastal uh, or shore settlements against the enemy, you're always going to win if you've got a decent force. Uh, we had equal number. He didn't stand a chance. We killed his eldest son. We've destroyed his army. We got 29 heroism. Oh, it's all in our favor. We got a nice bow. We got Huang Zhong. I'm going to release him because we'd want to re recruit him eventually. We're going to take the replenishment because even though that's a lot of money, we need to push back really hard and fast to take advantage of this situation. Non-aggression pack for that much money? Yeah. Wow. No, thank you. It's not even worth it. I thought we might be relatively close, but no. No chance in hell, my friend. No chance in hell. Yeah, Liu Biao now only has Liu Tong as his uh, son and heir. Um, does, I guess, solve a succession crisis. Fraternal versus loyal. We can only choose loyalty. Um, be clawing the tiger. So, this is where I will end the preview in this turn. Because... This is where it now gets. You can choose whether or not you follow the story. And Sun Jen has died. Sun Jen dies, and Lady Wu takes over as regent before Sun Tzu comes of age. Or you can let them run and do nothing. The decision for what you do is up to you. Whatever happens, if you lose Sun Jen, your army here is in trouble. You need to put a new commander in, for example. And Sun Jen is one of the finest sentinels in the game he's one of the finest fighting officers in the game but you want to put an officer in there really quickly because you can push back to lubiao and see if you can finish him off if you catch him and kill him it's game over for his faction if you beat his secondary army then you want to head up and deal with Tai Mao and huang zhu finish off the vassals really quickly and you will have jiang xia um, and you will have nan to yourself with Changpu's army, you want to slowly build it up and take out Changsha too. You have the money now to put more troops in there, and you want to put more troops in there. Lu Su, for example, Lady Wu, it doesn't matter. Throw them into the force. There's Chen Gong uh, available as well. Hire Chen Gong, hire Mao Jie, it doesn't matter. Hire them, bring them in to uh, Changpu's army. Choose another person, throw them in, take out Changsha and cement your territory here because you can expand so fast in the south. Have Sun Jian's force win your war up in the north, with Chang Pu winning the war in the south. Watch out for Shamulka as well. You want to keep him relatively friendly. He can be an irritating thorn in the side because his territory is very difficult to clear out. There is a reason why historically Wu did not clear out that area very effectively. It's because of people like him being able to hide and ambush and destroy your soldiers. But ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you've enjoyed this preview. If you have, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye-bye.